Welcome to the show. Hello, 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 hello
Yeah, I think that's right. How old is Nunzio? 55. Wow. Now, I think someone's fibbing about their age here, aren't you? Johnny Levern. Oh, Ivern. Uh, Ivern, yeah, I think you might be right. How old is uh, Johnny, apparently? 109. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not Abba, but it's... Ebba Larson. And she is a an impressive... 39. Yeah, 39 years young. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, Ebba. Now, someone that don't want to put their ages up, uh, we've got firstly... Paddy Rosier. And finally, a good friend of mine... Derek D'Souza. And he's uh, got a really big lens. So happy birthday to you guys out there. And uh, let's go back then to our um, fabulous and famous... I think it's only right and fitting that we play something from Aretha Franklin because it would have been her birthday today if she was still with us. Sadly took away from us late last year. This one is called uh, Think and it's by Aretha Franklin. Hi there. It's Paul. So, you 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 can call me Cookie. I've been called a lot worse. (laughs) (laughs) How are you, Paul? Are you okay? I'm good. Excellent, excellent. And obviously we had some uh, news last week. We won't go into it, obviously, but hopefully things are uh, slightly improving. That's all I can ask you of. Yeah, they're, they're, they are better. Thanks for asking. No it worries at all. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Stuff, Absolutely. But, um, if you know Paul, obviously, life. yeah, you know what we're talking about. If you don't know Paul, then we won't obviously, uh, you know, bog you down with all of that. We don't need to do that, do we? No. Indeed. So let's move on to finer and better things, hopefully, then, for Paul. And, obviously, a member of uh, the viewers' band. Now, is it your band, or is it a collaboration with you and the rest of the guys? It's, it's, a, it's a band. I am just the front guy. Not just, but the front guy. People see you first. They, yeah, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> that's you. You're the showman of the uh, group, then, are you? Well, I've been, yeah. Try to be. <laughs> We're all trying. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm just going to read out a little something here from uh, what you sent me uh, a couple of weeks back now when we uh, got the uh, f- brand new single, actually, and we will be playing it after we finish our conversation today, Paul. So you put on here, glad you like it from the first spin. We've got some stonkers coming up. The next release entitled She Says Yeah. I wish they would. Yeah. Uh, will be the follow-up, which you wrote in Liverpool towards the end of last year. So... That- Right, let's let's go on with that then. So she says, "Yeah." Well, I mean, what's that all about? Um, it, it it it's 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 quite a filthy tune, actually. We like a filthy tune here at Tiger. <laughs> it's a <Radio>. filthy tune. <laughs> um, it, it's um, it's a bit of a steamy sort of raunchy kind of number. Um, but it, it it's just a pop song. We write pop songs proudly. No, that's we're good. We, yeah, I mean, everybody sort of. Um, run shy of doing that these days because everybody's too cool for school. But um, <laughs> you're, you're certainly true. We're, we're, it is, and we're, we don't do that. We write we write songs that hopefully scan well on the radio. We, we are getting a great deal of airplay at the moment. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised actually because it's a great single. What we're going to play at the end of this interview, the uh, the new one. Yeah, it's not um, it's not officially out yet, but um, we've given we've given you and one or two of our our favourite radio stations, a, a little preview before it's due out. It'll you, be, I think the release date is around about the 20th of April. Wow. Um, it, it got put back, but um, it'll be out and ready for download okay. uh, in all the usual places from Brilliant. that and then, time onwards. And then the follow-on from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You've just done that on purpose. I know you did it, Paul. Uh, she says, <laughs> yeah, when, when are you thinking of releasing that one, then? That'll be probably a month after. Okay, okay. And then there'll be another one straight after that as well. We, wow. We're releasing some digital singles first. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then there'll be an EP uh, probably around about end of May. And yeah. then there'll be... Uh, it may, in actual fact, it may be before that because we've got a couple of shows that we're doing up at the Cavern in Liverpool. Brilliant, brilliant. We'll get on to those in a second. So, yeah, um, and, um, an EP. And then an album uh, later in the year, uh, which will be, uh, I think there's 10 tracks that are going to be on this album, and um, uh, we're very excited about it. Absolutely. But may I make a suggestion? Make an odd one. Come on. Make an album of <laughs> odd numbers. You want one more, dear? For this current album, we've, we've actually written more songs for this album than yeah. we ever have for any previous album. Um, but we, we've got 10 songs that we just 
and love and fit well together. Yeah, we we we, we might put a bonus track on. Ah, oh, that's well. the one. The bonus. The bonus. The goodie. bonus track. Yes. <laughs> Oh, we got to do that. We got to do that. Maybe a live, maybe a live thing or something. We'll we'll we'll, we'll stick something else on there. Do you know? I love a live thing. You know, I mean, uh, live music's good, but a live thing's even better. Now, uh, going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven! Exclamation mark. Okay, I've got it in there now. Um, who's decides your covers? I mean, they're absolutely brilliant. Well, we we decided uh, for the single releases to go um, completely retro and back to the sixties. So they're kind of based on yeah. Um, they're based on sort of single sleeves from back in the day when everybody bought vinyl forty fives. That's it from your um, local was, record shop, ladies and gentlemen, or Woolies if you prefer. Yeah. So we 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 built up a uh, we built up a, a, a whole range of um, covers that are kind of have got a retro feel to them. Of course. Uh, to bring out the new. The, the new singles and they build together to form the back cover of the album ah there you go so, so it, a little it, bit of thoughts gone into that to this one and um, yeah yeah the album will be called unstoppable and it'll be out later in the year perfect perfect so note that in your diary there ladies and gentlemen so just going back to the cover here then so uh, i'm just going to try and describe it paint that picture if i may uh so you've got the round uh, black circle obviously with the white font in there with the viewers and obviously when we're dotting the eye we've got a lovely star in there i love the use of that it's brilliant then we've got like it's these it. pentagons and they're sort of uh you know the first one straight in the white then obviously it's sort of like they're twisting round like you say it's like got this sort of almost this psychedelia amount of colors in there and you've got yeah, the greens, it's kind of you've got the yellows. On the old Columbia Records. Yeah, um, yeah. Sleeves, and uh, we we got a few, we got a few others. There's a rainbow sort of coloured one that. Um, Absolutely uh, love it though. Use something similar to that. So we've made we've made a similar one. Yeah. Not exactly like it, but it's similar. Now on a lot of records that you get these days, you know, so and so featuring so and so, you'll get these parent guidance things saying, "Warning: This record might have bad, you know, bad wordies in it. This one has got this record must be played loud at all times. Perfect." <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But there's two versions of it. I think the one that you're going to play is the clean version. But I've got is, both versions. Is, yeah, there is a bad version. Oh. It's got one rude word in, uh, but yeah, the one yeah. that we. We, I think the one, that, the main one that we've sent you hasn't got that word. Absolutely. It's I not can, that bad. No, it's not, actually. I've played both. Uh, obviously, on the radio, <laughs> I, I tend to sort of, like, favour the, you know, the uh, <clears throat> the cleaner version, shall we say. But yeah. because we're not um, actually under Ofcom, we can play the rude version. But for this for this one, because of its tea time viewing, uh, we're yeah. trying to keep it clean for all of That's our not, lovely That's not a problem. Um, we, we had to make, we had to, we always, you know, if we're going to do anything like that, we always make two versions anyway. Absolutely. So what's the process in uh, actually, uh, you know, from, from the beginning, from an idea? I mean, obviously, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You just, I'll, I'll tell you, why can't you just stop at two or something? But, you know, OK, one through to seven. <laughs> it's just to cl- clear it up a bit. Um, <laughs> who came up with the idea? Who's your chief songwriter? Is it yourself, Paul? Or? Well, it is me, yeah. But um, since, the, since the last album... Um, uh, the band's been going for, um, I don't know, since, since about sort of 2011, 2012, but we had yeah. a really big um, shake-up uh, the last album, which was just about two years ago, and, and, a, and a, a personnel change. And um, that's when I became the, the sole songwriter of the band. Gotcha. And, but with the new lineup, um, th- there are other contributors coming in, and Mark Watson, who's the lead guitarist, he's... He's been um, he's been working with me, um, and he's been kind of feeding hook lines, uh, t- musical hook lines, which I've then been sort of taking on board um, some of his ideas and then turning them into into full songs. But um, Fantastic. I'm the main songwriter still. Excellent. Um, but it, but it's great to have somebody to collaborate with. Again. Oh yeah. Uh, it lessens the load, I suppose, a little bit. You know, you've got someone to fall back on for ideas and inspiration and stuff like that. So let's go through the band members then, Paul May. So obviously you're the upfront man. Uh, you play guitar as well? I play, yeah, I play uh, rhythm guitar and I'm the, I'm the, I'm the main singer. Um, we've got uh, new girl, uh, Carolyn Bruce Spencer. Has, she's joined us um, and she's kind of the, she's on vocal as well. Okay. Uh, a, a sort of second vocal. Uh, uh, Kevin Proctor is on bass. Uh, Mark Watson, as I already mentioned, yep. is on lead guitar. 
And Dave Stone, who's been with me for some time, yep. um, he and I are the kind of original members from the viewers. Uh, he's on drums. He's on the hitty things. He's on the, yeah. That's the and one. God, is he a loud drummer. <laughs> he's not that big. He's not a huge guy, but he's, he's, he's the loudest drummer I've ever worked with. And I've worked <laughs> with a few, but he, he's... <laughs> oh, see, he, he doesn't there's, roll there's his no, sleeves up. There's no um, volume switch with him. He's either, like, he goes up... You can turn him up to 11. That's the one. So he's got one volume <laughs> control and it's loud. <laughs> it is loud, yeah. So, right. Uh, so okay. We tend, to play, we tend to play loud live because of him. Well, I think you need to. You know, I mean, you know, when you go out to see these bands, there's no point in, uh, you know, relying on too much of PA, you know. I mean, obviously you're going to be mic'd up and things like that. But, yeah. you know, drums, you know, they are mic'd up to a point. But at the end of the day, you've got to hear your drummer. You've got to hear it to keep time oh, and everything can, else, you really. You hear him all right. Good. Right, so yeah. let's go through uh, some of the info on here as well. So you've got your own website. That's all the W's. And that's the viewers band, all one word, dot com. Is that correct? That's right, yep. Brilliant. You're on Instagram as well, forward slash the viewers band. So check them out there, boys and girls. And if you want uh, to email them, it's info at theviewersband.com. And, of course, they're on Facebook. You just type into your search bar, the viewers, you'll find all of that information right there. So your genre is a 60s style. Um, is that still present there, or do you feel you might be moving yeah, that, on from that, it? Very much so. All our influences come from, you know, what, what we all love, the golden period of um, particularly British music, which I think is from the early 60s through yeah. to the early 70s. And um, all of our music's influenced by that time. Yes. And uh, I mean, we, we, we've kind of got labelled with being a mod band, and, and I guess we are. Yeah, But yeah. It, was, it wasn't something that, that we, uh, you know, uh, went out to do um, in, intentionally. It's, 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 some, it's something that's evolved. Um, we make no apologies. That's the era that we love. Um, yeah, we love of course. All, we love all the clothes. We love, we love the fashion from that period. And all of the music, and, and I think the thing that we, that we found as you know, being labelled with, you know, the mod band tag, being an originals band, is yeah. that quite, quite a lot of bands that we've been on um, festivals with uh, are a lot more sort of derivative of, of what Paul Weller's been doing, and that's great, but uh, I yeah. think... We're we're much more um, we're much more rounded than that. I think we've, there's a, there's a, there are a lot more places creatively that we're that we go to. And if you and if you're a big yeah. fan of sixties music, it it wasn't all one kind of thing. You know, there were there were lots of there were you know there was there was psychedelic stuff. There was jangly stuff. Yeah. There was you yeah. know full on who um, you know. Absolutely, and I think, you know, these people that do follow Paul Weller, and don't get me wrong, I mean, Paul Weller's a fine and, you know, upright uh, musician, he's brilliant in every sense, but, um, yeah. like you say, it's just sort of a one dimension you can go down, it's one avenue, there's so many well, other I, avenues I, you can I, explore. I think, I think there are a lot of 60s influenced bands that have kind of got hooked up on that one thing, Yeah, and, yeah. and, and, and we love that, and the, the, the track that you're going to play... Um, uh, in a minute, the new single one to see for five, six, seven. It's it, it's very much more along the Weller kind of thing, and, yes. and I'm a huge fan. But um, uh, our previous stuff and the previous, um, the last album that we made, Universal Sky, um, you know, it's a real chocolate box. There's there's a lot of different influences in there, and there's a lot of different types of songs in there. It's not all one thing. Yes, of course. How do people get hold of your uh, past material? Is there a website or... Well, you can download um, all of the tracks from Universal Sky on um, Spotify and iTunes and all the usual places. And Brilliant. Buy the album from um, Amazon. Uh, and you can buy it from our website. There's a... Even though our website's under construction at the moment, there's still a link to buying it. So if you click on it, you yeah. can buy the, the, the physical CD. Fantastic. Um, which will come to your house Ooh. in the post. Oh, there you go. <laughs> something something so physical that, 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 and tangible to hold. <laughs> now, you've got a live event coming up, as you said, in Liverpool. But uh, I've noticed on the uh, website here, on the 20th of July in 2019, you've got your Mod, Soul and Scar at the Exmouth Pavilion. Now, this is a, and I've got to say it right, a cider festival. Is that right? That's right. Now, do you like cider first and foremost? Um... Occasionally. Oh, okay. Well, you might occasionally fit in there then. So apparently, uh, there's lots of that going I'm not around. A gin person, but <laughs> oh, chin chin. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Have a drop of gin. 
Um, why not? Gin's the new sort of, uh, I suppose, the new ale, I suppose, really, because everyone's I, going I, for this gin now. I think it's more gin's the new cocaine, I think. Ah, there we go. <laughs> uh, just, just remember where it goes, though. It goes in the hole underneath the two holes. <laughs> That's the one under your nose. Okay, excellent. But um, uh, yeah, we're 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 there. We're looking forward to that show. That's going to be good. Um, I, I mean, we've got uh, we've got on Saturday, tenth of May, we're at the Snooty Fox Pub in Torquay. Yes, I saw that as well. You're getting around a little bit here, aren't you? Uh, we're up in Liverpool on uh, in May as well on Friday the seventeenth yep. and Saturday the eighteenth. We've got a double header at the Cavern pub and the cavern club in liverpool on the friday night we're at the pub and on the saturday we're at the club fantastic so that's the fourth time that we've been invited back to play that is uh, brilliant at the cavern. that's that's great we love it there excellent excellent and obviously and you know you must you must like your beatles then if you you know if you keep going back there you must like a little beetle going on there as well is there do you know last time we were there last year yeah. um fella came up to me at the end after our set yeah, and um, and I, I didn't recognise who he was, and, and, he, and he was chatting away to me, and he said, um, he said, "Do you know what?" He said, "You're one of the only bands that comes here that plays original music and makes me feel like I did back in the day when the Beatles used to be." Here. Oh, and now. He said, and by the way, and he, he gave me his name, and I, you know, I've, I've gone and forgotten it, but he used to be the general manager at the Cavern, and that meant the world because it's quite a long way to go from all the way down in Cornwall where we come from yes and indeed. um uh, that meant the world to us at, at, at last year when we played there but we had everybody up on the floor dancing and um perfect that's what you've got to do when you go to the cavern it's a well, dance place do, yeah. and um uh, wh- whichever stage we play on whether we play in the original um you know uh, cavernous um uh, stage, the small one where the, Be- the Beatles made famous, or the backstage, which is much bigger and air conditioned and has a green room behind it. Um, you can't, you can't beat a good green room. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a good green room. That's and the we're, one. we're playing on that stage this year. That, that's the stage that Paul McCartney plays on now if he goes back there. Brilliant. I was about to say, that, that, stranger, that stranger that you spoke to, it wasn't actually Paul McCartney, was it? No, it wasn't. No, no, no. that's all I right. I recognised him. Ah, but he could have been in disguise. You never know, Paul. You never know. It could have been. Yeah. You just never know. He gets around, you know. He just walks into he, pubs he and clubs. No, and... Definitely, it definitely wasn't him. This guy, <laughs> this guy definitely didn't have any hair. But, uh, <laughs> but it, was, it was always great going back there. And last year, <clears> it, was, it was really good fun. Right from the get-go, everybody was up on the floor. And it was, it was, it was great because we... There were a couple of bands on in the evening who, who'd, who'd got, you know, good. They'd, they'd gone down well, but yeah. w- as soon as we hit the first few bars, everybody was up and, and, and doing the twist. So Absolutely. Good, Absolutely. And we're also at the Corn Exchange um, with the Jam in, in Exeter on the 24th of uh, May. Looking forward to that one. We've gigged with them before, and that that would be a really good night. Indeed, indeed. I'm just looking through all of your bits and pieces here on uh, Facebook as well, and uh, there's so much to look at. So, originally you formed in 2011, the viewers are now a five-piece band having experienced a few personal changes, as you said, along the way, with major influences stemming from the 1960s through to the mid-70s. The viewers have uh, developed a classic 60s sound, which you'll hear on this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can't say that in one breath, can you, really? With a, a con contemporary twist so um going back to your music writing then um now i'm always puzzled by this one because i speak to a lot of musicians out there and uh, it's really only two ways of writing songs now uh, are you the one that will think of a song first or do you have a, some sort of music in your mind to put words to which way are you Usually it all comes at the same time. Ah, oh, right. Okay, you have to be different now, don't you, Paul? <laughs> Every, everything happens at the same time. Gotcha. So it, does, it does with me. Um, it, the thing with me, I, I never know when it's going to happen. It just seems to land in my lap. And sometimes it's three o'clock in the morning. I drive yeah. my nipples mad. I bet. It, I get out of bed and, I've, um, and and this particular song that you're going to play, I wrote at three o'clock in the morning. We'd, um, we'd, we'd done a gig with um, the Small Fakers. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it was a really good gig, and, and uh, both bands went went down really well, but us as the original band and them as the tribute band. Yeah. But um, I was I was buzzing, and I couldn't get to sleep, and I, I drifted off for about half an hour, and then I woke up and I wrote this song, and it took, it took me about 
half an hour. It was one wow. of those, just half an hour, bang, done. It's just there. So are you yeah. a notepad? Are you yes, notepad? All, all, came, all came in a flood that night. Indeed. So do you do you walk around with a notepad on you, uh, Paul, or do you use digital now, or a bit of both? Um, I sometimes have a little Zoom recorder with me, yeah. um, and if not, my phone. And um, yeah, if you, if you, if, often it happens in the car ah. or when I'm moving. So yes, of course. If, 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 if I'm driving by, making sound, making noise, making noises into something, or I'm walking down the street making yeah. noises into something, people think that you're totally <laughs> off your head. Don't worry, it's just Paul from the viewers. Do uh, it in the next not single. To, <laughs> not to wait because sometimes you, the idea goes. Mm. And that spark, that spark goes, and these days there's no excuse. You've got the technology on you. Just rec- as it happens, just kind of sing it into the phone, record it, absolutely, um, whatever it is. And then when you get back home and you, you, you've got guitars and pianos and stuff around you, then you can do it. Indeed. In- well, I did used to play pro oh, a long time ago, and I was signed to um, Larry Page, Page One, and the, and the Kinks back in the eighties. Right. So that was a good period, and um, uh, Larry put my old band on at the London Palladium, and um, we, we had it was a totally different band to the one that we have now. But, yeah. Um, but I think that's where where I kind of re fell in love with all the '60s stuff again, having that influence, being in the same stable as the Kinks and the Trogs and Cher, because wow. as, as, he he used to look after her for a while. Um, having all of that music around me really made me listen to that stuff again. Of course, yeah. Um, yeah. And then down through the years, I just got sick and tired of contemporary music and what was around, and I just kept going back to that time. Um, yeah. Because um, it was just such a consistent time, and I don't think we have that now. No, no. I think we things had, were we a lot easier back then as well. The, uh, for me, all the best bands in Great Britain right now you usually find them in the smaller tents at every festival up yeah. and down the country during the summer. They're there. There's great music out there, but for me, it's been marginalised by a really awful mainstream chart. Um, I think I've got to lean with you on that one because, you know, you look at chart today. I mean, obviously, you know, it's a long time ago since I started listening, well, since I've listened to the top 40 on, you know, other radio stations. And, um, you know, I wouldn't have a clue now. I mean, obviously, being a mobile DJ, I do still have uh, my fingers in the sort of top 40 yeah. as such. But um, I had to give away a, a disco the other day. It was for an 18th, and I just went, look, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Now I know it's for an 18th birthday party. I just really would not enjoy playing the music. I really don't get it now. I mean, nobody can it's do just, it on their own. They feature everybody I, else, and they've all got no, naughty words in them. <laughs> I think it's just awful. Um, I, 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 know it, I know I'm an older guy, probably a bit like you. Yeah. But music, to, the, the quality of songwriting today just doesn't hold a candle no. the quality of songwriting from a long time ago. And look, I use uh, I use all the you know all the latest software for making music. I use uh, you know Logic Pro and all of the and Cubase and all of the all of the usual stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, you know it's no big deal. But the, the thing is, it's so easy for the program to use you. And, mm, and, and yes, it's I've so heard this before. Yeah. And And um, you know you, you you write a loop. And then you think, oh well, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to write a bit in between to kind of link the two. I just can't have this going all the way through. No. But then, that's not the way you write a song. It, it, it's that's the software program using you, yeah. not the other way around. And I, I just think a lot of young songwriters today, all of the answers they're looking for are right there, back from kind of '63 through to '72. Everything that they're looking for, all the inspiration they want, is right back there. And, Absolutely, and the yeah. range of music, the, re- the brilliant songs that were, that were out, and so consistent. Mm-hmm. Um, and we don't have that now. And I, I actually feel quite sorry for this current young generation because they don't have the quality that we that we grew up with. No, indeed, uh, and, I totally and they agree really with you. don't. Um, my youngest daughter and her um, and her uh, boyfriend the other day, we went to. Uh, we saw we, we, they they took us to see the Rolling Stones. Wow! And and they just had a great great time. They said, well, "Dad, we know all of the songs. <laughs> we know them all." <laughs> and then a few days later, we went to watch the Queen movie. Oh, and, fantastic uh, movie! My daughter's boyfriend said, "He said it must have been great growing up when you did." And I said, "Yeah, right, right from you know from the time of the Rolling Stones right the way through. Yes, to, yeah. You know, really the last great band I think." 
the band wise was probably Oasis in the 90s and I, I just don't think there's been any one much since no and I, I, I totally agree with you I mean there's some really good bands that have come out of Manchester as there is uh, from London as well but uh, going back to the 60s then so who really inspired you to sort of follow a musical career then I mean obviously you mentioned the 60s a lot so there must be a, a single person or possibly a band or a, a variation of both uh, so who was your sort of idol if you like um, I, I mean, Ray Davis and the Kinks. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, totally agree. Fabulous. You know, The Who, um, unbelievably good. The Birds, I love The Birds yes. from America. Um, you know, lots of good stuff coming out, came out from America then, the Beach Boys as well, great stuff. Uh, the Small Faces, obviously. Oh, well, um, yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. All the usual, all the usual ones, but, that, but also, you know, from the 60s as well, people go, I mean, Adele, she's great. But go back and listen to some, some Dusty Springfield. Yes, now that She's is... She's amazing. Yeah, uh, she was the, you know, the Adele of that era, I think, you know. I mean, she, Adele she, is she, fantastic. She was amazing. And, yeah. of course, obviously, the Beatles, you know, I mean, a nine-year period of pure genius. Um, Absolutely, yeah. No, one to give it that long, to really. It, yeah, they won't give it that long, but they'll album. be with us forever, won't they? It, it just... I, I sit down and marvel at that stuff even now, and and, and, and I listen to that, and I think, wow, you know, I well, mean, to to have sat down and written "Let It Be," uh, unbelievable. Well, do you know, I was thinking she loves you. There was so much simplicity to the song, to the song itself, um, without getting too deep here, um, but it worked, and that is yeah. what we need today we don't need like you know what is rapping and uh, I, I still think they've, they've spelt that incorrectly there should be a c there somewhere but um <laughs> moving on um yeah, you know, i think a lot a lot of it is as well a, lo- a lot of music today there's no fun in it ah it, that's it's the all, word it's all everybody's too cool for school and 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 it's all about um you know it's all about how much i've got and, and look at me and i've got this and i've got that and yes. i'm doing this and i'm doing yeah. that and i'm better than you and and uh, when you, what happened to just being good? Yeah, absolutely. I want to hold you know, your hand. She loves you. Smile. You know, there's a couple of great ones. You know, Pinball Wizard, a great musician. Uh, you know, with the Who, the Pink Towns End. You yeah. know, writing that. I mean, absolutely fantastic. And Roger Daltrey are blowing your doors off singing it. You know, yeah. it, but it was excellent. I mean, obviously that was a little bit more than simplicity with the Who. But you know, you know, the way up. You know, both of the you know genres of rock and roll uh, and rock music and obviously mod music and everything. There was simplistic wording, and it was about you know not about how big my wallet is or how big my wheels are on my four by four. It was simplicity. It was about boy meets girl, girl meets boy. They fall in love. You know, when there you go was, with Ray yeah, Davis. There was, there was a lot of that. People yeah, weren't yeah. afraid. P- people weren't afraid to show a little bit of innocence. Absolutely. Every now and, then, and that's a good thing. But also, you know, I, I think music was a lot more intelligent then as well. I think people that wrote then yes. were just brighter than, than a lot of people that write today. Mm. Um, they had opinions. They had political opinions. They had views. Yes. They, they, they knew what was going on. They knew about wars going on all over the world. They knew about um, injustices in our own country. And then, and then the BBC that. came along and just stopped all the music going on to their uh, pit, hit parade. <laughs> yeah. Because they, and, you know, they were they very scared. They were to make statements. And, yeah. and yeah. I think that, that, to some degree, has been lost um, in the last 20 years. Um, and and I, I don't know, I just think a lot of people, I think a lot of people that are writing now, it, it's so repetitive and it's been dumbed down. And... Um, no, nobody really says anything um, any anymore. Um, the song that you're going to play in a minute is is about the sort of it's kind of a, it's a it's a song for underdogs everywhere. Yeah. And um, and, and there's a little there's a little dig about a, a Saturday night, at a Saturday night talent show in there as well. Ah, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Say no more. I think we know the one we're uh, you're on about there. <laughs> There we go. Especially uh, in the version that's got the swear word in it. So I'm not afraid to, you know, to have a <laughs> have a have an opinion. There's a clue in the name of this band, the viewers. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we have some views. 
And we're not, and we're not afraid. We're not afraid to say it. And if it upsets people, I really don't care. <laughs> it's your music. It's I'm, come from I'm you. Old, I'm an old dude now. I don't care. No, and I think a lot of people should take note of what you're doing because there are a lot of great bands out there. I mean, I follow a lot of great bands, uh, old, young, in between. Um, and they're all doing their own thing, and which is really, really good. And to mark the words of one Mr. John Peel, you know, to get music on the radio these days is such an incredible journey to try and even get yeah. there. I mean, the likes of like your major sort of radio stations without naming them all, uh, it's almost an impossibility. They probably get influx of millions of songs on a daily basis, which are pretty much then put straight into the delete you know, delete folder and delete it on a daily or even on an hourly basis. Yeah. Um, so gone are those days where you've got uh, your John Peel's out there really, really listening to great music that are really well, unknown again, bands. The ma- you know, the major stations are afraid to uh, employ people that totally correct, um, yeah. have, a, have an opinion and, and will rock the boat and not stick to the, you know, the paid paid for playlist absolutely and, uh, and they, they they're just they're just afraid of that all the best all the best music on the radio is played on independent stations and online stations there's no doubt about that absolutely um, that's yeah. where you find music and all the best musicians are the ones you find in the little tents um at the major festivals there's great music out there i mean bbc introducing is brilliant yes i fully applaud that they, they find they find people um They've been terrific to us. We've had some great exposure from, from them, and they've put us on their live stages a couple of times. Fantastic. And that's been, that's been good fun. But, um, but, 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 but as you say, the journey from there to the mainstream market is, is really hard. But the journey from there yeah. to working live and making a living is, 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 is more doable because, you know, you've got, you, you, you can put your music to so many places now, and you can reach an audience. Of course um, you can, with, yeah. Without having a major record deal. So before we introduce the uh, the current single, which is not quite out yet, but we've got an advanced copy, ladies and gentlemen, um, what sort of three things would you say to an up-and-coming unsigned band? What would you say the most important factor for them to do first? Be themselves. Okay. Second thing? Um, stick to your guns. Right. And finally, the third thing? Eat lots of cake. <laughs> Rock and roll at its greatest. So you heard it here first. <laughs> that is absolutely fantastic. And now, I've got. Now, in, in all seriousness, yeah. the third thing is don't turn up, play gigs in jeans and t shirts. Make an effort. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Make an effort. Like our hero, Mr. Paul Weller, once said, you know, we're going to go out and buy identical suits from Burton's on the HP or whatever it was. And uh, they turn up in pretty much uh, off the peg suits. But they made a point, and it really worked for them. So yeah, I totally agree with you. It, it, it did. Yeah. And they were right to do that. And yes. when we, when even if we play in a pub, we make an effort. We yes, turn of up, We look like a band. And, That's it. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it makes such a difference. It, I, I, I just think it's a mark of respect, of disrespect, when you turn up. In the in the in the jeans you've been working in all day, oh, yeah. uh, and a ripped T-shirt that you might have been painting the front door in. Um, <laughs> not, not unless you're playing that sort of style of music where it might actually fit in quite well. I've noticed people actually come out of a nice pair of jeans and put a ripped pair of jeans on and play. Um, I've actually well, seen yeah, that. I mean, if you're a brilliant music, musician, yeah. musician, yeah. sometimes it, of course it doesn't matter. <laughs> but I think I think it does. I think I yeah. think if you uh, you know remember the, the the big sort of soft metal and metal bands are, are they're those guys and girls they're Absol- dressed yes they, that's have it. Some, they have somebody that dresses them their, their clothes may look like they're all ripped to, ripped to shreds but they are they're the designer cuts and jeans brilliant there and obviously uh, boys and girls out there that are out there in the unsigned land obviously rehearse 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 because uh, you want to sound good so basically then image is pretty much everything um, obviously for you Paul and uh, I suppose if you look at it you're a third of the way there if you look like a band and uh, obviously you've got all the equipment you're two thirds there you've just got to sound like a band so obviously the rehearsing part of yeah, it is very, yeah, very I mean, important we've, we, you know, we're, we're all seasoned old school players. We've been yeah. playing for a long, long time, but we, we rehearse all, all of the time and record and keep just keep writing. Yes. Um, yeah. Don't be tempted to go down that route where you know you're out there playing covers. Um, we've been we've been, we've done a few festivals recently where we've been the only original band. 
and it and it's hard. It's hard to go out and play yeah. your own stuff in in smaller venues because everyone wants to hear you play, you know, the stuff that they know. Yes, but, of course. Um, I refuse to do it. I just won't. I just won't do it because um, I mean, we we do sometimes hurl a few crowd pleasers into our bigger set. Yeah. But when we play a festival, we don't. We turn up. We play. We play our music. That's what that's what we do, and that's what we do, and we don't apologise for it. Um, well, you don't need to. No, you don't need to. No, absolutely not. I no, mean... uh, no the, and you know, and I'm always comforted by the end of the evening. If I if I've been playing alongside you know great covers bands who've gone down amazingly well, or tribute bands that've yeah. gone down amazingly yeah. well, uh, I'm always comforted to, to look at um, when the airplay uh, numbers come through. Uh, uh, on my account, I can see uh, where we're getting played all over the world. And those bands that we were playing with the previous night, they're, yeah. they're not on the radio because they don't write anything. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, obviously, from my perspective, from an audience perspective, yes, it's always nice to hear a cover to make sure, you know, uh, to hear their take on it. But it's also yeah. equally as good, and I actually admire original songs because you can get your teeth into them. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you'll hear a song once, like with uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'll, I'll get round to it in the end. Um, and I heard it the first time, and I said to you straight away, that is a grower. I like that tune. And I've played it Thank a few you. times since, and um, it has. It's really now stuck into my mind. Now, I've got to ask you this question, okay? Uh, Before you introduce one. this, why 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7? <laughs> As I said before, it's a, it's a song for the underdog, yeah. and the, and the character, the central character in the song, yeah. um, just dreams of having having a, a wee holiday every year. That's it. Brilliant, brilliant. Just to, just, just to be themselves for that for those seven days. That is fantastic, and, and that's obviously, all it is. Yeah, that's brilliant, and it's simple. Like we were going back to simplistic. And that's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to now ask you, Paul, if you wouldn't mind, please, uh, if you'd like to introduce your own record, please, here on Target Radio, where we target unsigned bands, new artists, and obviously the viewers' band as well. <laughs> so fire it away, and thank you very much indeed, Paul, there from the viewers. Thank you very much indeed for taking a little bit of time out this evening to jump on board and tell us a little bit about the viewers and, of course, your musical uh, influences and tastes as well. So thank you very much much indeed paul You're and i'll leave Thanks, and i'm going to leave the last That's bit to good. you now so you've got the final word here on this great single word before we play it thank you once again there we go right down to you now thank you ladies and gentlemen please enjoy one two three four five six seven by the viewers Target Radio online at gmail.com if you want to appear on this show in future shows to come. All you got to do is send us an email and that's targetradioonline at gmail.com and uh, we'll have a great interview, we'll play a couple of your songs if need be and uh, we'll just generally have a chat, find out a little bit more about you. Uh, it could be you, it could be the band, it could be a solo artist, it can be pretty much anything you really want. And, uh, yeah, and it might get you noticed a bit more. A few more record sales, you know, a few more people at your gigs. 